Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another rolling stock review. So today I've got a piece of rolling stock for you which is really, really interesting, or at least I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I've not actually had it out of the box yet. So this is something really cool that a lot of people have recommended to me and uh, finally it's gotten to the point where so many people have suggested it uh, that I've decided I'm actually going to get one. So it is this, it's by Backman and it's a Queen Mary brake van and as you can see the size of this thing is quite unusual for a brake van. In fact it's so large that it's articulated, it's got two bogies on it. So as I say loads of people have suggested I get one of these and uh, finally I've decided to. Now these are quite expensive, the RRP for these is uh, £28.95 I think it is, although at Hattons you can get one of these for £24.95 and by the way if you want to get one while they're still in stock there is a link down in the description. Now obviously that is that is quite expensive I would say, it's roughly double the price of the Oxford Rail Toad which I bought and we all know how good that was. However as you can probably tell it's an awful lot larger than the Toad and there's a lot more to it as well because obviously it is articulated so more wheels um, larger wheelbase whatnot so yeah maybe just maybe this will be a decent value model it certainly does look interesting so let's get this out i hope you're going to enjoy it uh, let's see what it's like all right so yes the queen mary's brake van mine is in the southern brown as you can see and they really are fascinating things i mean just the size in itself is fascinating and if you're wondering why they are so long especially long uh, I will tell you a little bit more about them and uh, how they got their size and shape a little bit later on. So for now then, let me just show you what is on the end of the box. So you can see that my version is 33-827C. It's a Queen Mary brake van, and as I've already said, yes, it's in the Southern Railway Brown. And Backman have also produced quite a few different versions of these. So as I say, there's a link in the description if you want to go and browse some of the others available. But for now then, this is going to be the first time I've ever got this out. So uh, let's get to it. There's not an awful lot to see on the box. Uh, there's nothing about the actual brake van itself on the back so we can go ahead straight away and get this out so let's do it let's see what this is like as I say not had this out before so it's been torture waiting for the review but uh, here it is finally wow that thing is huge and heavy actually very very heavy to say it's still in the packaging and also presented to me we have these parts here now I spy a little bit of paperwork inside the box to tell us what these are but uh, just looking at them without having looked at the paperwork. It's not clear at all what those are. So there you go, that's a look at them. Let's find out then, shall we? All right. Okay, so it looks like it's a part of the bogey. I'm not absolutely sure what they do. Maybe it's something to do with the brakes. I'm not absolutely sure. But either way, it looks like they slot in there. So yeah, go figure. I'm sure I'll be able to find out what those are with a quick uh, Google search later on. But uh, yes, at least it shows you where they go. At least we're not just left to guess because I don't think I would have guessed that probably. Okay, shall we get this out then? Let's see what this is like. All right, well, it's well packaged. I'll give it that. There's uh, little bits of uh, foam all over it to keep the different parts safe, which is good. And a big piece on the top. All right, whoa. I tell you one thing, this thing really is heavy. To say it's just a brake van, and I suppose in comparison to the Oxford brake that I had last time, the weight of this is absolutely unbelievable. And in fact, I'm wondering if uh, this lower portion at least is die cast. No, as far as I can tell, there's nothing outwardly on the model that is made of die cast, as far as I can tell, but there must be an awful lot of, uh, must be a heavy weight, for example, somewhere in the center there, because it is, as I say, really, really heavy, even for its size. So there we go, the Queen Mary brake van. What an interesting looking model this is. So we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second, but first of all, here's a little bit of information on the Queen Marys themselves. So the Queen Mary brake vans actually got their names because of their size. Now I'm no expert, maybe Queen Mary herself was a huge elongated woman, that's very very possible. Or more likely I think it probably refers to the RMS Queen Mary, which at the time it was built I think was the world's largest ocean liner during the 1930s. So that's probably more likely I think. Now their massive length was actually due to the fact that they were built on the underframes of previously withdrawn LBSCR coaches, which actually explains obviously why they're articulated and of course why they're so long, although apparently later batches were purpose-built and they weren't just conversions of older coaches. Now it's unclear exactly how many of these were built in total, and if you do know, please do let me know, uh, but a handful still exist today under preservation, which is always good to hear. 
So there it is then, the Backman Queen Mary brake van in the Southern Railways brown up against the white background. And I must say, although I love this thing for its size and its complete uniqueness, I can't help but be a little bit puzzled by the asking price of these things, and that's something I find myself saying about Backman models quite a lot. Now, I'm not going as far as to say I'm disappointed in this because uh, I, don't, I think that's a little too strong, but I must say I'm a little surprised that the level of detail isn't a little bit more impressive, let's say, given the RRP. Now, first of all, yes, I can understand why this would be a little more expensive. Obviously, as I've already said, the size and weight of the model will have definitely driven up the price, and even the fact that it's got four Four axles, eight wheels on it instead of just uh, four wheels and two axles on it, that certainly will have driven up the price. So I can at least see why it would be a little bit more expensive than the Oxford Toad that I looked at last time. However, I must say, I do think this is true, I think the detail on this Queen Mary pales in comparison. So again, I am puzzled by the fact that this is twice as expensive. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all then, yeah, all of the handrails and things do appear to just be a part of the moulding. There's nothing separately fitted about those handrails as far as I can see. They are separately painted, which make them look at least relatively realistic, but they're not separately fitted. So again, can't see that there's any massive cost involved there. Similarly, the windows, as we can see, are not glazed. There's no glazing on these, and I have seen photos in real life of the Queen Mary's, and they did seem to have the glazing in the windows, so I'm not sure why that's been omitted. And there's certainly no interior detail of any kind. Even on the outside verandas, you can see there's no wooden panel effect or anything like that, so it's very, very basic. And uh, there's very, very few separately fitted details at all, as far as I can tell. In fact, in fact, the only things I can see are these, which I think must be some sort of storage containers on each end, which appear to be separately fitted. And then this uh, part here, which seems to protrude from the side of the body, I'd love to learn more about those and what those were for. But apart from that, it's just a very, very basic model. Look, the couplings are not them. You can't exchange those couplings. Those couplings are just a part of the bogey. No sprung buffers or anything like that. It's just a very, very basic model. Now, there's no crudeness involved in this model, I suppose, apart from the fact that none of the windows are glazed or anything like that. It's presented very, very nicely. It's just so simple that the massive price tag of nearly 30 quid just baffles me. And by the way, the even more expensive Graham Farish version does seem to have glazed windows and things. So. I don't know. Yeah, it's very, very confusing. However, as I say, it is very, very nicely presented. And one area that at least does have a good level of detail is the bogies. As you can see, the bogies are very, very nicely represented there. And we do, of course, have metal wheels with that uh, white lining around them. But even the white lining look isn't done particularly well. You can see it is a little bit clumsy. But that is probably in isolation. There aren't any other details on the model, which I would probably call clumsy. That's probably the only one. So apart from that, it is very nicely presented. The paintwork, I suppose, is relatively complex with this one. As you can see, there's quite a lot of printing on the side of the thing, but each end of the model is done in this sort of uh, almost lead red color, which I really quite like. That's very interesting, isn't it, that? And uh, yeah, that's relatively well done. And of course, the molded detail is very good across the entire model. You can see uh, on the sides, really, the amount of riveting there and the wood paneling effect is done to a high standard. And there are a few finely molded details, as you can see around the model and on the roof as well, by the way, uh, but nothing separately fitted really and uh, nothing particularly complex. So as I say, for twice the price of the Oxford Toad, I think the Toad wins uh, hands down, even given the extra size and weight of this model. Uh, but yeah, it's not too bad. Let me know, by the way, let me know in the poll. Is this reasonable for the amount of money? I'm not 100% convinced, to be honest, but it's not a bad model, and it certainly does look the part, I suppose, as long as you don't look too close. So yeah, not too bad. I think we've seen worse, haven't we? But uh, again, and I say this about Backman models quite a lot, it ought to have been better, or it ought to have been cheaper. I think Backman are trying to have it both ways, you know, expensive and not that detailed, and that doesn't work really, does it? It doesn't work too well. Anyway, as I say though, not disappointed, just a little surprised, but let's get this down onto the layout. We'll put it onto the back of a southern train and we'll see how it looks. All right, let's get it tested. All right, so down onto the track, I have set up my Hornby S15, which is just a lovely model. Really, really like that one. Of course, she needs a freight train, so what better than to use the Ocean of Ocean Wagon? So I've put some of those on there, not all of them, because I don't think the uh, loco would manage them all, at least not on Gordon's Hill, but quite a lot, as you can see. And now it's time to test Old Queen Mary on the track for the very first time. So I'm going to get it railed up, and we will see how it runs. Now, it's possible that there'll be quite a lot of drag behind this because of its uh, massive weight and the number of axles, but... Actually, that is very nice and free rolling. 
oops, don't couple just yet. Yeah, so despite its weight, it does seem to be a really nice, smooth, and uh, as I say, free rolling model, which is really, really good. Obviously, you don't want the massive weight to have a huge effect on the pulling power of the uh, locomotive, because then the size of the train that you can haul is going to be quite heavily affected. But really, this, this moves smoothly as, as you like, you know, really, really good and smooth is that. So that's pretty good. Let's get it coupled to the ocean wagons then. There we are. And I will give the S15 a little bit of juice and we will get this train started. All right, let's see if we can get it to go past for you nice and slow. So say what you like about the detail, and indeed I have, but uh, it does look the part, doesn't it? It really does look great. And once again, just the, the length of it and the size of it uh, makes it look pretty imposing at the back of any train, really. So I thought this might be a good excuse to do a mini Southern Railways running session. So we've got one of my favourite classes of loco on the middle line. This is the West Country class. Let's bring it in in early BR green, which is absolutely gorgeous. And she too has got a bit of a goods train, more of a mixed goods train this time, although we've still managed to slip an ocean wagon in there. But there's also a Southern Railways brake van at the back of there. But as you'll see when it gets closer, that's a Hornby Dublo one but it still looks pretty good. And then on the inside line, if I just get this one started, this is one of my favorite Southern Railway locos from Backman. Although technically speaking, it's not really a Southern loco, it's uh, SECR, isn't it? But it is the C-Class, and at least this one's in a Southern livery, and it's a Southern lined black as well, which is really gorgeous. And she's got some passenger coaches. So I hope you enjoy the running session. Let's go and see how the Queen Mary looks, shall we, as uh, she journeys around the layout. Let's try it. So yes, if you're desperate to have a Queen Mary brake van on your layout, of course there's not an awful lot of other options. I suppose Backman know that too, which is probably why it's still in the range, despite being quite obviously an older model, uh, which is getting a little out of date now. However, once it gets down onto the track, it does look the part, doesn't it? As I've just said, it looks absolutely fine. So if you must have a Queen Mary, for whatever reason, if you've always wanted one, then I suppose it's not too much of a bad option. It's quite an expensive option. But at the end of the day, at least you do get a piece of quality rolling stock, which looks pretty good, as long as you don't look too close. Got old Camelford crawling along there, nice and slowly. I always like the uh, West Country classes going nice and slow, for some reason. Uh, I know they were capable of slightly more speed than that, but uh, no, I quite like seeing them going nice and slowly. And it's been a long while too since I've run the S15, but uh, it is a lovely loco, so get that running. But yeah, the Queen Mary, I must say, I do like it. I suppose I like the real thing more than the model, but uh, at the same time, it would be awesome to see Backman retool one of them because of such cool, unique, unusual brake vans. It would be great to see one with all the modern details on it. It would be impressive, wouldn't it? And of course, that wouldn't be a bad idea, a retool, because they're quite, well, they're quite universal, aren't they? They're still around today, some of them. So they do span an awful lot of different eras. So they're very, very versatile things. There we go, versatile, that's the word I was thinking of. The only trouble is, with the brake van reviews, you've got to wait for the entire train to go past before you see it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it is a sight, isn't it? It really is a sight to see. I reckon it's twice as long as uh, any other brake van in my collection. It really is. But I like it. And uh, I've enjoyed learning about them, to be honest. They're very, very interesting things, aren't they? So here are some of my ratings then for the Backman Queen Mary brake van. Now, to me, in my opinion, this model looks like quite an old one that Backman have continued to offer with a modern price tag. And so, as you might expect, the detail level isn't all that great. And by the way, I do think that's what's happened. I think this is an old model that Backman continue to sell. The problem is, for that price, the detail just isn't that impressive. And usually, when I've purchased a piece of rolling stock that did cost that much, there's usually at least one, if not several more features that you see and you think, wow, that's really impressive. But unfortunately, there was nothing like that on this model. I think if anything, the molded and printed details were somewhere between adequate and impressive, but that's more or less all I can say about it. And those are where the two stars come from. So it's very basic, nothing wrong with it, just pretty basic for what it cost. The performance though is quite the opposite, it performs exactly as it should do, it's got plenty of weight despite having the, you know, quite a lot of wheels to take that weight, and therefore it runs absolutely fine on the layout, and it's, you know, it works as it's supposed to, so I can't fault the performance, so that has to be a 5 star by default. The quality is also a 5 star, I think. Now, I wonder if I'm being a little generous here, but I think in other areas I'm being quite unforgiving, so I think we'll give it the benefit of the doubt on the quality. 
I think partly because of its simplicity, the model does hold together very, very nicely. There's certainly no small details that break off or anything like that. And in the hands, it does feel pretty sturdy, despite not being die cast or anything like that. So even though it is a little bit plasticky, I think overall the quality has to be a five. And of course, the way it's been assembled and painted is quite impressive as well. There's certainly no cause for complaint there. So I think a five star there is just about justified. However, something that isn't really justified, in my opinion, is the price. Now, as I say, the RRP of $28.95 sounds a little ludicrous to me in the modern day given what else we've got on the market and even the Hatton's price which is better £24.95 is quite expensive when you consider that that is more than twice what I paid for the uh, Oxford Rail Toad which I've kept mentioning today so yeah I just think for that price it needed to have been better or cheaper and I think it's a shame that Backman have continued to produce this model given that it is obviously quite aged now and I think if they could sell it for a lot cheaper, you know, going on half the price maybe for £15 or so, I think it would make a great intermediate model really, wouldn't it? But obviously if it is too expensive for them to produce for that price or anything close, then perhaps it's time for them to maybe retire the model and possibly even retool it. That would be looking out for their customers, but unfortunately that's not what Backman have done, at least not yet. Overall then that is 6.67 out of 10. Yep, nothing wrong with it. It's a good quality brake van. It looks very, very cool. If you don't mind spending the money on it, I can recommend it, but don't expect anything major. I think I perhaps uh, expected a little too much, which isn't unreasonable though, given the price. So do let me know anyway what you think about the Queen Mary. Is it something you'd buy? Is it something you'd avoid? Do let me know down in the comment section, and I'll certainly be interested to see what people have got to say about them. It's nice to see a nice mixed freight train as well, isn't it? Ought to do more of that. Because I, I tend to collect a lot of like wagons, I do tend to put them all together, which of course isn't all that realistic. And a good example of, is of course the Ocean of Ocean wagons. But yeah, I did ought to mix them a little bit more, didn't I? Not all the time. I do like having uniform trains once in a while. But I think moderation <laughs> is the key. I ought to change things up as much as possible. So there we go, the Queen Mary. Very interesting. All right then folks, well that will just about do it for this review. As I say once again, I hope you've enjoyed seeing a rolling stock review for a change. As I said before, I do like doing them. They are enjoyable just, you know, really to do something a little bit different. I'm not saying I'm gonna be doing rolling stock every time it's still going to be mainly locos but i think just once in a while it does make a nice change doesn't it especially if it's a piece of decent rolling stock and i think overall this one has been so there we go that's my review of the queen mary as i say let me know down in the comments what you thought about this and for the time being folks have a great week and i will see you all very very soon all right cheers everybody thank you for watching and thanks for your company